All right. Welcome back, everyone, to Rejects and Friends Event Horizon, our small showcase show showing off a couple runs that are auxiliary to the main event. Speaking of the main event, Raf Rapid Fire is coming up on June 23rd. You can find a schedule of all the games if you type in exclamation point Raf RF in chat. We are looking for a couple more art prizes. So if that is of interest to you, a link will be dropped into the chat very soon just to show or uh, I guess solicit any art prizes that you might have in in your mind, in the background, in the wakes. So let me know if any of that sounds interesting. And I will now turn it over to Requiem of Spirit, who's going to be performing Le The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, all towers in a sort of preparation for our big event during Rapid Fire, which is going to be all dungeons versus any percent three times in a row. So take it away. Hello. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead, start immediately. We have a one minute cutscene before timer starts. And so during that time, I guess me and Omen can maybe talk about what I'm doing here. Um, so this is a category extension run um, called All Towers. As the name suggests, and as might be obvious, we're gonna get All Towers. And um, ever since the discovery of like one of the more newer tricks in the run called BLSS, this category has been really easy, more like just a practice for the trick itself, because the trick lets you lose no height and float very long distances at high speeds. Um, and so normally that run, it's very nice and casual, it's nice and chill. Uh, gets pretty boring really quick though, very repetitive. And so I'm going to try to turn some of these segments into more of like a movement showcase and showcase a bunch of different tricks, including some tricks that are completely obsolete, some tricks that you don't see too much anymore. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. This is definitely going to be a fun run to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, if I hit the tricks. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Three, two, one. All right, so right here, Rec is getting the uh, the Sheikah Slate, and this is going to let us do the very first glitch in the run, and that is going to be the Shrine of Resurrection clip. In about, uh, in about 33 seconds, he's going to gain control of Link again, and he's going to try to clip out of this room. Fun fact, all towers actually used to be a main board category for Breath of the Wild until it was moved. Oh, wait. Wait, really? Wow. <laughs> yep. So now he's going to try and align Link in a very specific angle and scope, and there he goes. He clips out of bounds, and this allows us to skip all of the opening cutscenes, and it also makes sure that the time of day in the game is locked at 5.15 a.m. and the weather is completely static. Now he's gonna have to clip back in bounce by crouching in this very specific spot. And he is on his way to the Temple of Time. On the way there, he's gonna grab a couple pieces of equipment. He's gonna grab probably a couple peppers, I assume. And then um the Boko Spear and the Pot Lid. This is the Pot Lid and... And of course he grabs the Boko Spear with no problem. So... Normally people shield surf here, but I'm deathly afraid of my shield durability, which will become apparent soon. So I'm just gonna run this entire segment. <laughs> so unfortunately this cutscene right here is unavoidable after you get a certain distance away. This will always trigger where Zelda talks to you and tells you to check your Sheikah slate and go to the uh, go to the tower. But we're going to completely ignore what Zelda says. And we're going to go and do our very first uh, shield clip with a run. He's going to land on his shield on this little lip and give himself something called skew. And that's going to flick Link backwards when he does a shield flip and unequip. And he's going to use that to clip through that window and grab this bow and a bundle of five arrows from this pot. And now he's going to do something called BLSS. This is one of the more recent tricks to run. This trick absolutely destroyed Breath of the Wild speedrunning. It absolutely changed every single category. So by smuggling this pot, the collision of the pot and the, uh, the bow and link, we can go into the climb animation where... Um, 
where Link is unaffected by gravity, and then by wiggling back and forth, we can give Link momentum backwards. And then afterwards, he had to do a fall damage cancel by throwing his weapon and canceling the animation by unequipping his shield. And then, uh, and then he had to clip into the shrine. Now he's inside the bomb shrine, where we're going to get possibly one of the most, actually pretty much the most broken rune of the entire run. This is going to let us do every single piece of movement tech. From BLSS to wind bombs and etc. Speaking of wind bombs, we're actually going to be seeing Wreck do the very first wind bomb of the run inside the shrine right here, skipping the entire interior. And he hits it, looks good. So by jumping into bullet time and placing both bombs behind him, he can detonate the first bomb launching the second bomb into Link and send himself flying over the entire like puzzle and every obstacle. And then again, he does a BLSS, this time with a bomb, to go straight to the monk. There is, of course, a, if you're familiar with this game, there's a faster wind bomb you can do, um, which takes you straight to the monk. It's way tighter. Um, it's really not worth it. It only saves like seven to eight seconds. So um, this is much safer and much easier to perform. And with that, like within the first four and a half minutes, we've covered almost all of the movement tech you'd be seeing within the run. And like most of the movement tech you see in like anyone going for PB pace in most categories. Yeah, wind bombs and BLSS are the most consistent forms of movement. And so if you like look at all towers world record that's pretty much all you're going to see except mm -hmm. uh except i guess uh that one bit of movement to akala but uh <laughs> Actually, well, no, that, even that it, you can basically tie the vtb stuff with um just wind bombs and bloss it's much easier oh i didn't even know that <laughs> I know that Breath of the Wild has a ton of category extensions. Um, in what percentile of popularity is this one? Um, so the the popularity of all towers kind of jumps up and down with uh, whenever new movement tech gets discovered. So all towers is really popular in the beginning because people were doing all sorts of uh, routing for it and trying to figure out what the fastest way to get around to each one was, and then. People found Flying Machine, where you can take like two minecarts and stack them on top of each other and use Magnesis on the bottom one. And then you can basically just fly around to every single tower. And it spiked in popularity for a while, and then it immediately dropped off afterwards because it became a super boring run where you just fly to the top of every tower. <laughs> and then afterwards, because the category kind of died off, it got taken off of mainboard and became an extension. And then um, after that, people started to discover other things like uh, like wind bombs and BLSS. And with each of those discoveries, again, the category spiked up in popularity again, and then slowly kind of veered off in popularity. I would say All Towers is still one of the more... Um, one of the more popular extensions because it's really good for practicing BLSS. You have really long ones that you do around the whole map. But um, there are definitely some more more popular ones out there like uh, like all dog treasures and things like that. So sorry, right now... More... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. No. no, no, you go. You go for it. Uh, so that wind bomb right there... Actually, you can go for it while I scan, because I need to pay attention to what I get here. <laughs> Alright, so Wreck had to go get the tower, because obviously it's an all-towers run, and it is uh, it is fast for him to get it on the way oh, to Magnesis. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> oh, I wonder what he's going to use, though, so I don't know. But um, <laughs> along the way, he gets the, uh, the Great Plateau Tower, and then, unfortunately, with the Great Plateau Tower, there comes a cutscene where the old man tries to talk to you at the bottom and uh he kind of traps you in there and 
Um, there's actually a giant invisible barrier around the Great Plateau Tower as well. And so it gets hard to leave the tower once you're up there. But by doing a wind bomb at a very specific angle, we can go over the invisible wall. And normally you can't do a fall damage cancel because you're in ragdoll state and you don't have control of Link. But by looking at the forest and buffering the menu, he can actually uh, force Link to come out of ragdoll with a lag stop and then do a fall damage cancel and land right before the Magnesis Shrine. And now Wreck is doing something called an amiibo run. So he's going to scan a bunch of these amiibo because... Later on, he's going to try and do some uh, some different pieces of movement to spice things up. And because he's going to be scanning Amiibo for those anyway, he might as well scan Amiibo for fish. This is the, the main food source that he's going to use for the entire run. Because wind bombs, every single time you wind bomb, it actually takes a heart off of Link. And, uh, there's some movement tech that I'm going to be trying later. It's very finicky and very uh, difficult to pull off, but... And if it fails, I could like lose two and a half hearts immediately. And so having extra fish always helps. Everyone loves, even though it's risky to do it, gotta show it off. Uh... All right, wow. that kind well of done. <laughs> that, was... that was early bullet time, so I had to adjust a bit. <laughs> Yeah, I was uh, I was amazed you actually hit that. <laughs> but that that wind bomb is actually your your like bread and butter. That is like the thing I want. I think I watched you practice that wind bomb in Discord for like um a hundred hours. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that right there. So normally the Magnesis Shrine is like a very straightforward shrine where um you can basically just run and shield jump across every gap and. Then you just blow yourself up at the end to get rid of Ragdoll Glitch, and it's it's very straightforward, and and um, you don't really lose much time going for uh, just that simple strat. But Wreck decided to play it risky and do something called Canal Wind Bomb. It's a pretty precise Wind Bomb where you have to time it so you don't hit the wall in front of you, but you also don't go too high and hit the ceiling, and you also can't land in a bad spot. So with that uh, that Link takes the full brunt of fall damage and dies. So, that right there, that was extremely well done. Now he's going to be doing a BLSS to a specific Because I'm very scared. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> so, he's going to be grabbing this extra pot lid because uh, we're scared about shield durability later on. Um, but now he's going to be climbing this tree and doing something called the Tree Wind Bomb up to the Stasis Shrine. So, unfortunately, with the structure of this game, there is no skipping the Great Plateau. You're going to have to start from uh, the Shrine of Resurrection, get all four shrines to get the Paraglider, because there's unfortunately a barrier around the Great Plateau. And we cannot, uh, we cannot escape that. But once we're free from the Great Plateau, we're free to roam the map and grab every single tower. Now we're coming up onto the Stasis Shrine, and you'll see that uh, he's grabbing this uh, this Stasis Rune, and then he's going to uh, he's going to be doing another Wind Bomb inside this Shrine. This one is um, another kind of precise Wind Bomb, but uh, this one also saves uh, probably one of the most times out of all the the Shrine Wind Bombs on Plateau. So he's doing a quick fix as he jumps over that gap. Oh, very uh, well done. Got it. <laughs> so by doing that wind bomb and he can uh, he can basically skip running through this shrine and um, the, the problem is if you go too high and you hit the ceiling, you're going to fall into one of the gaps, or if you miss the monk, you end up falling off and taking damage and having to run through anyways. But thankfully, he actually hit the wind bomb, and he was able to go and land straight at the monk and skip that entire shrine. That saves about about 10 seconds-ish? I think so, yeah. So here, normally you'd see like a stasis launch with this boulder, but we need another piece of equipment for a trick coming up. So I'm going to... 
attempt to scale this wall. So far, the wall is winning. <laughs> I've never seen somebody lose to a wall before, but uh, it's first for everything. Alright, that hammer is going to be our friend. It's going to come in handy real soon. So, once again, Rekka is going to set up a another surprise surprise, a BLSS, <laughs> where he uh, gets it off of the tree stump, it'll, it'll step up animation, and uh, now he's going to slide all the way to the Cryona Shrine. So, because we're going so fast with BLSS, you'll see that the game sometimes like stutters and it'll like pause for seconds and that at a time, and that is called world loads. So, the game has to like stop and load the world to uh, to kind of catch up with Link. And because we're going so fast with BLSS, normally this cold area that Link takes cold damage in gets completely unloaded. And um, we don't actually take any cold damage while we uh, try to get to the shrine. And now because we actually got the tower earlier, we don't have to clip into shrines anymore. The tower is what allows us to just activate the front of shrines and to actually just enter them normally. Yeah, normally you'd have to clip into everything. Um, it's pretty neat. You, you would like get skew off of Magnesis again and then use that for both Mag and Stasis and then do um, an extended shield through the door for Cryo, but we don't have to deal with any of that. So now this wind bomb that Rek just did to skip all of Cryonis is one of the easiest and one of the biggest time saves out of uh, all of the Shrine Wind Bombs on Plateau. So with that, now he's done with all four Shrines and he's going to be heading to the Temple of Time to get the Paraclider. Then he'll be able to continue with the, uh, with the rest of the run. So one thing I forgot to mention, which it's not going to be apparent anymore, but the first two cutscenes you would have seen were voice acted in Japanese with all of the text in French. It's voice acted in Japanese because I prefer the Japanese voice acting, and it doesn't lose any time to switch that in-game. The text is in French just because that saves the most time across all of these NPC interactions and uh, the initial Sheikah Slate cutscene. Unfortunately, there's not going to be any more voice acting. It's just the first two cutscenes. Unless you, uh, unless you count the little, uh, little water drop from the, uh, the tower as a voice acting cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me who did that little bit of voice acting. The water drop? Did that. Yeah. Are you in the credits <laughs> of the city again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you'll see me in there. <laughs> I'm under water drop. <laughs> so, again, Rek does a, another BLSS and then a fall damage cancel to land on the Temple of Time and enter this cutscene where he's going to be finishing up this tutorial area, the Great Plateau. And he'll finally be able to move on with the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the game. There he gets the paraglider. That's a solid plateau time from Rek. Yeah, for getting the tower and scanning five different amiibo, that's a pretty good time. And we're going to just start immediately. Um, if I can find my shield. And thankfully... So yeah, sorry, so, go ahead. I was just going to say that the uh, the Temple of Time is at, like, practically the perfect height for this lake tower coming up here. Yeah. It's just a little short, but we end up right above, like, the final climbing platform, so we can just jump onto that. And, uh... If Link wants to grab on, that would be nice. <laughs> He was just doing a couple of uh, little victory hops there. He was just a little happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that one segment gives you a taste of what this run would look like if you were going for like a PB or just wanted to practice BLS. It is very repetitive. There's only three 
segments in this run where we have to use something else to gain height. For everything else, the next tower we're going to go to is lower. And so it's just BLSS all the way throughout. But that's obviously too repetitive. So I'm going to try in this flip to showcase some tech that was completely obsoleted by BLSS. <laughs> Hopefully I can hit it. If I mess it up too many times, I'll just revert back to the BLSS. Sounds good. I'm uh, fingers cross crossed. My fing Everyone I'm pray. crossing my fingers for you. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, after he lines up the trick, I will uh, I'll stay quiet for a bit to let him focus and listen to the timing. But he's going to be doing some, something called a stasis bounce, and he's going to be scanning the guardian amiibo to uh, to drop some metal boxes to let himself set up that trick. Need to be at full health because if the box hit me, hits me, I'll die. <laughs> uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Oh my god, that is... I wish I could... I wish we had, like, an audience. People would be clapping for that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> that trick... This, uh, this stasis bounce is actually very, very precise. It's pretty hard to hit. So, he had to line up the metal box using Magnesis, and then charge it uh, up I'm with the stasis. I'm way too far left, but I can stop here. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this is something... Yeah, you can correct the path, thankfully. But um, this trick is uh is really precise. It um so he uh, charges up the metal okay. box with stasis, and then after that, he has to push himself against the box, align himself up, and then shield jump at the proper timing, the very precise timing. He uses the audio of stasis beeping, and then uh, if he does the shield jumps at the proper time, the box actually launches him at a super fast pace, like he just did. That trick is I'm wondering why I'm walking. I accidentally fell off, so I'm trying to make sure none of the enemies see me. A little bit of time left, that's okay. And that's a really good recovery right there. Fortunately, the stasis balance was, uh, was a little too far left, so he had to do a couple wind bombs, but we're right back on track. Yeah, that, that trick with the box, it is very finicky. It, um... If the box trajectory is pointing the wrong way, you can get hit by the box. If it's um, if you're too far away or like at like a corner, sometimes it can fail. Um, sometimes it just messes the shield jump input, and it's also like a the leniency. The frame window is not that bad. It's a five frames, which in a 30 FPS game is not that bad. But um, since you're listening to like a specific audio cue, you could sometimes go too early or too late, and that would also mess the trick up. I used to remember how many frames that trick was, but I can't exactly remember anymore. I think, uh... Alright, because I hit that one first try, I'm gonna try to do it again. But if I mess up real bad, we'll just revert back to BLSS again. Let's safety save once more. Oh man, he's going for another one. I'm excited. This shows what the true, like, if I can hit this, it'll show what it will look like if you have, like, a clear height advantage with these kind of launches. Aw, um. oh, okay. That time didn't work out. Um, I'm just gonna heal and then just revert back to a BLSS. Alright, sounds good. We already, uh... We already saw it once, so thankfully, we did actually get to see a successful stasis bounce, because that was very cool to watch. <laughs> but, um, unfortunately, stasis bounces have become pretty obsolete, because the time it takes to actually scan and, and line things up and charge it up with stasis, it, uh, it takes way too long for the amount of speed that you actually get, and pretty much by doing it BLSS within just a few seconds of, uh, just wiggling, you can see he's already at the speed that a stasis bounce would get you to. So. 
So yeah. Because stasis bounces give you that speed instantaneously, you if you actually time it, the stasis bounce only is like less than 10 seconds slower than a BLSS because it takes time to build speed. But the setup time is what costs so much. That and, and how risky it is. <laughs> I remember a long time ago, um, me and Vivo actually routed all towers with a ton of stasis bounces. And I remember trying to do that run over and over and over again and just not hitting all the stasis bounces I needed. I remember, uh, I think my fastest time with the, before BLSS was discovered, it was like a 104. And um, I remember you also tried to do the, the run with all these stasis bounces track well before uh, BLSS was discovered. But uh, thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, BLSS was discovered and now the run is much, much easier. So now from Dueling Peaks Tower, he's that going to... I'm just going to go back to the tower and try that again. <laughs> So from this uh, from this tower, we're going to see a very big problem when it comes to all towers as a category and when it comes to the routing is it's pretty hard to actually gain height in a lot of places. So BLSS is a trick where you actually can't gain any height and you only go horizontally. Oh, that's not good. Do I have an auto save here? Um, I'll just... You just warp back. back. Yeah. Yeah, that works. I have no fish. Yeah, so in that case, I messed up my wind bomb timings a little bit, and so I didn't gain enough height, and uh, I forgot to detonate the square bomb again, so that's a bit of a problem. That's okay. That's, uh, yeah, that's this not This is the bad. lowest tower. Yeah, this is the lowest tower, and so if we want to go anywhere from here, we have to do something to gain height, and you can quickly see how good wind bombs can be uh, in combination with BLSS. Let me also see. <laughs> Alright, there, there we, we go. go. So he's going to be so doing like a eight. series of four wind bombs. You can gain like a ton of height, as I'm going to try to show here. So, uh... Yeah, there are going to be a couple segments that um, he's going to have to basically try to do something to gain height. Unfortunately, like Akala Tower, one of the tallest towers in the game, that one was very tricky to um, to actually route places to to gain height. For a long time, that was like pretty unsolved what the fastest way to uh, to gain height to get to that tower was. But thankfully, we get that tower kind of uh midway along the run and then everything else is lower so we uh it's just blss's and dropping down that was one of the challenges when it came to routing this category yeah that just showcases how versatile wind bombs can be like with just you can use them wherever you can get bullet time so even midair and so with just four wind bombs i was able to get enough height to be above a Tenno tower we are now There's unfortunately a lot of downtime in this category because after every piece of really quick movement, we just press A on this little pedestal and now we have to watch this whole animation of the the tower, like little spires going up and lighting up blue and then this, you know, just all these little things and like this, this droplet very slowly coming down from this, <laughs> this like Sheikah dripstone. <laughs> We have to watch this 15 times. Actually, more, because we watch this in every single shrine as well. Oh, yeah, that too. You, you might be wondering in the shrines, if we don't even use things like Magnesis or Cryonis, why can't we just skip them? Well, if you try to, the monk will tell you that, you know, you're stupid and you forgot something and go back and get it. Not in those exact words. In those exact words, yes. <laughs> So here we are, and thankfully, the uh, routing-wise, this works out really well, because the Hateto Tower, the lip of it actually goes just barely above these mountains and lets you, um, you slide just past these and to the Lanayru Tower that's coming up. 
which is about the same height. So you'll notice that at times you need to like flick back and forth to gain speed, but you notice that at times I'm sort of stopping and that's because the game has an inbuilt speed cap. So I'm using the bomb trail to know when I'm near speed cap. Uh, I'll just eat here. All right, so the game does have a built in speed cap that caps how fast Link can actually be moving. So we can't actually build speed infinitely with BLSS. Uh, at a certain point when the Link hits that certain speed cap threshold, the game actually just stops him entirely. It gets rid of every uh, every piece of momentum that he has. So, yeah, Rec will have to look at his the blue trail coming off of him as he PLSSs. And the the pattern in that blue trail is what he looks at. When it gets to, um, when it looks like still and like it's not moving at all, that's when he knows that he's really close to the the speed cap of the game. So right now we're going to talk go to Akala Tower, which is the tallest tower in the game. And I'm going to, you can do this with BLSs and wind bombs, but I'm going to try something, an older strat, showcasing another kind of obsolete attack called BTBs, which if no one can explain. Right, of course, so BTBs are bullet time bounces. So what he's going to be doing is he's going to be entering a shield surf while in bullet time and bouncing off of an enemy and the ragdoll animation of the enemy actually uh gets uh because you're in bullet time the game actually miscalculates the the speed that link gets and it sends him about 20 times the speed when you exit bullet time so right here what he's going to do is he's actually going to grab bunch of ice arrows. He's going to freeze this Lizalfos. And he's going to line up this chest to allow himself to jump off and get bullet time and shield surf. Uh, that's not good. Um, I didn't jump off. Okay, if that's the case, I think I'll just continue with like the regular route instead of reloading and trying this again. Uh, that's unfortunate. So, unfortunately, this is a really precise trick. You have to actually, like, land on the Lizalfos at a very specific spot. Um, and so there, I didn't actually jump off the chest. I slid off it instead and pushed the Lizalfos out of the way. So that's, uh, takes too much time to reload. So I'll just... Would, uh, yeah, it is, um, it is thankfully faster to just, uh, continue the run the way that he's doing right now. over the speed cap does it overflow to zero does it just stay at the cap um all right guys yeah we beat ganon <laughs> we beat Ken. they cut back i'm at dark beast <laughs> Welcome uh, back. yeah i'll just reload back to linear that's cool Welcome back, Jason. All right, we should be back. All right, cool. Um, we, uh, so I managed to reach a call tower doing that, but since we faced some difficulties, I figured I would just come back here Retry the BT, uh, BTP again, see if that goes well. So hopefully this time I can showcase that. We should just pretend it's like none of that ever happened. Like, whoa, we're back at a call tower. Or, or, we're back at Linear Tower again. I don't know what happened, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. It was just a fa awesome. just... Yes, I got it. <laughs> Glit uh, glitch in the Matrix. <laughs> I was just going to say, an excuse to try the BTP again. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Um, also, what I did there wasn't just a normal wind bomb. You would have seen me going into the menu. You know, do you want to explain what like super launches are? So, right, that right there was actually um, a super launch where basically, if you open the paraglider on a lag frame, the very last lag frame, where the game goes from a lower frame rate back to the higher frame rate, if you open your paraglider on that exact frame, Link actually has uh, 1.5 times the speed coming out of... Uh, of wind bombs and 
stasis launches and things like that. Okay, so this is not the BTB that I want, but this is fine because there's actually another BTB I can do as a backup, which is pretty cool to showcase. Oh, well, this, I'm going way too far left. Uh, I can back this up with a wind bomb. It's fine. That right there was a uh, was a BTP. You can see he goes very fast by uh, by landing on that ragdolled enemy. And I, I assume this is like the uh, the Boko one that goes up. Yeah. So we're gonna be seeing another BTP. Hopefully this guy doesn't see me. Thank you. Want to climb up? Thank you. <laughs> oh, he saw me. And we're all the way at the top. And perfect. There we go. So, uh, <laughs> okay. So by exiting bullet time right there, he uh, he can let himself go straight up by landing on a very specific part of the Bokoblin. and that lets us gain a lot, a lot of height and make it to the top of the tallest tower in the game with no problem. So when BLSS was discovered, one of the frequent questions that you would always see for like a whole year was, okay, so now what should I do? Should I BLSS or should I wind bomb? And obviously the answer is it depends, but BLSS, as we've already explained, cannot gain height. And so wind bombs are really good for that. But even for distance, wind bombs are surprisingly versatile and really fast. Um, so from this tower to Elden, which you could have seen in the distance, it's actually quite a bit of distance, but you can make it with a single wind bomb. And so I'm going to attempt once to do that. I'm going to heal and save here and try to do it once. It involves hitting a super and that can make you speed cap, which is not good. So I'm going to just heal, save and try it once and otherwise revert back to a BLSS. All right, I think I hit it. Uh, that looks that looks good to me. I went a bit far right, but I can always curve it, so it's fine. And so even though I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, thankfully, when you do super launch something, it becomes a lot easier to turn that launch as well. Yeah. So wind bombs are very versatile like that. Even though I spent that much time in the menu, this is still faster than doing the BLSS, even if it's only by a few seconds. If you did the menu and puts a bit faster, you could be like up to maybe even 10 seconds faster, but it's obviously very risky. Right there, like if I, you, it's a frame perfect trick to pull the super launch. Um, and so if I missed that, then this would have never made it because super launches give you twice the speed. There's also the problem of if my win initial wind bomb was too fast, my super launch would have made me faster than speed cap, and so it would have the game would have killed link speed immediately. Um, which is actually something I wanted to talk about earlier uh, in response to the question about um, speed cap. Uh, the game maintains like a body and soul for link, and how far the soul trails behind the body is what determines when you'll speed cap. And so when you speed cap, the game just snaps the body and soul back together, and you lose all speed. Here we see uh, another BLSS, this time going to the Woodland Tower. So the thing that's a little bit scary about this slide right here is the fact that Link catches on fire and then his bow actually stays on fire. So hopefully, uh, yeah, it takes, a, it takes a pretty long time for the bow to actually burn, so we're, we're fine. But with slides that are long enough, like in categories like all dungeons and things like that, we actually have to route in places where we pick up a metal bow because sliding to and from Goron City, the, uh, the bow can burn. And when it does burn, you drop out of BLSS. But yeah, if you go fast enough there, you should only lose one heart. In fact, there's actually a really cool wind bomb you can do there. Um, turn wind bombs sometimes don't work because you stay in the fire for too long. Like the wind bomb I did for Akala to Elden might not work because you might stay in the fire for too long. But there is a very ancient wind bomb called backflip wind bombs, which if you super that actually works really well. 
<laughs> no, when was the last time you saw one of those? A backflip wind bomb? Like, <laughs> oh man, I, uh, I don't know, like, the summer of 86? That, <laughs> that stuff is ancient, <laughs> man. <laughs> Backflip wind bombs were one of the first ones discovered. Um, takes a bit of time to set up, but you can go in any direction. Normal, normally wind bombs have like some restrictions on the directions you can use them in. Yeah. So if uh, if the square bomb hits Link at certain angles, like um, it can send Link too fast, and those are those are called dead angles because the the direction that the square bomb is is based off of the kind of like the mini-map, the cardinal directions of the game. So all the uh, the flat sides face north, south, east, west. And um, you can be hit by the flat sides or the corners, but some places in between, they uh, will cause you to speed cap. Those are called dead angles. So the slide I just did from Woodland Tower to here, that is the point where the old route before Beelosis was discovered would have diverged away because that there's no way to make that distance possible. And so back in the old days before Beelosis was discovered, we would have instead warped back to Great Plateau and tried to do something there. But instead, we can just slide all the way and then use a couple wind bombs to gain the height we need to make it to, I believe this is the third tallest tower. Very close to Jirudo Tower, but not quite. Jirudo is slightly higher. Not Jirudo, I guess it's um, Wasteland Tower? The really tall one. <laughs> yeah, that would, uh, yeah, that's Wasteland. So, <laughs> I feel like it's, it's actually pretty funny because um, we... I remember a long time ago when we first spoke, one of the main things we talked about was just like all towers. I think, um, <laughs> I think like half our DMs were basically just like all towers are routing. And there's just so many screenshots of just like, yeah, there's like a red branch and then a warp and then a blue branch and then a warp and then a green <laughs> branch. And like all that stuff is just completely thrown out the window. All that stuff is just obsolete. Yeah. Now. <laughs> kind of sad. I, I was the the old route we tried to do. It had like, I want to say, ten stasis bounces. It was wild. And so, like, from, from Hebra Tower to Tabantha, like, a stasis bounce would give you all the distance and height you need to make it really fast, but, of, of course, this is still going to be faster. The uh, the scary part about doing a stasis bounce from Hebra Tower is the fact that you're taking cold damage. So, right. you take... So, if you do get hit by the box, you end up dying. That's the reason I didn't want to try doing any here. <laughs> So the game actually has a mechanic called one-shot protection, or at least that's what we call it. Is that when Link is at full health and he takes damage that normally would kill him, it'll leave him with, uh, with a quarter heart. And uh, that is thanks to one-shot protection. A lot of enemies, like hits in the game, have one-shot protection on them. Getting hit by the, uh, the box during stasis bounce also has one-shot protection on it. This, uh, this section going from uh, Hebra to one of the next towers is actually one of the most difficult sections before BLSS because of the cold damage. Routing in um, movement that was fast enough while you're tanking this cold and having to route in food because you tank the cold damage in this area was such a, such a hindrance on um, figuring out how to go from tower to tower back in the day. Wind's really strong. Uh, Alright, we're good. So we've completed quite a few towers now. After I get the next tower, there's only going to be three towers remaining. 
And so once I get to this next tower, which I believe is Richland Tower, um, I'm going to try to do a stasis bounce once again, just to break the rep repetition of uh, continuous BLS. Um, this one I'll try to give a couple of attempts, but again, just like before, if I fail it too many times, I will revert back to a BLS, just in the interest of time. Hello, tower. Okay, it loaded in. <laughs> A lot of the times when I'm sliding, I try to look at the tower so it loads in. But if you make a mistake and you look up, which is, it's pretty normal. When you try to BLS from one spot to another, you want to look up to minimize loads. But when you do that here, just the central pedestal just doesn't load. And so you have to stand there waiting, looking like an idiot. Again, we get to see this little, uh, this little Sheikah dripstone. My favorite part of the run. Yeah, oh. for the upcoming um, race for any percent and all dungeons in the main event, this is going to be most of the movement you see, just wind bombs and BLS. AD will have one or two BTBs, which you have to look out for, but the rest is just this. Plateau looks very similar to what I did. That's... I didn't want to use that, but that's okay. <laughs> That's one of the fish that heals more hearts, but that's fine. We're almost done anyway. We don't need too much fish anymore. Um, did I save? I did. <laughs> nice memory. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'll maybe try it once more. One of the problems with getting hit, it's stasis bounce often gives you. Yeah. So um, it gives you a very weird skew. Yeah, unfortunately, if you uh, if you're slightly off with the timing for uh, for stasis bounce, it gives you a very weird skew off of the box that uh, that we call stasis bounce. Okay, I guess today is just not the day, so we'll just go with a BLS. Like I said, this is a very precise trick. It is very hard to hit. Um. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, I was quiet there because, uh, of course, he needed the uh, the audio cue for the timing. But yeah, so unfortunately, when you mess up the the uh, stasis bounce, it gives you something called a skew bounce, and that right there is uh, something that he'll have to take a little bit of time to clear before he can try the trick again. You can see that uh, when Link tries to shield surf, he just he just bounces in the air. He just gains height randomly. That was uh, that was skew bounce. I only have one fish left. I hope that's not going to be a problem. I I think that's okay. I think you should be fine. Um, so the next slide, it's going to be completely in the cold, and I'll probably end up with like one heart or half a heart. And uh, depending on what the weather is after that, maybe it's just a good idea to scan one more amiibo here just to be safe. But yeah, that's the reason why I stand so much on Plateau, because one failed stasis bounce gives, like, causes almost three hearts of damage. Which is three fish right there. Yeah, I'll play safe. I'll just scan once more. It's just a single scan. So uh, there's actually not too many towers left in the run. You can see that there's um, what, like two towers left. Then there you uh, once we get those last two, the uh, the run should be finished. Um, this is interesting. I've not actually seen this kind of warp before. I uh... yeah. So the Hebra Tower, I called it the third tallest because you do a slide to get to Wasteland Tower, which is really high. You do a slide from here across the entire map from north to south, and that ends up being the fastest way to get to where you want to go. 
But you can see it in the distance, all the way over there, all the way at the bottom south of the map. And your health ends up working out just perfectly that you, you go fast enough and you hit the right spots where the cold disappears. You end up there with one heart. Um, but otherwise, usually you end up there with like half a heart. So before like the LSS was a thing, this was not possible before. We would instead warp back to Great Plateau and instead use a book hoblin in the mountains that you can honestly see in the bomb trail right over there to use it to do another BTB. And um in fact that clip is in our DM somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh that's the routing that I'm familiar with. I actually didn't know that um I didn't even know you could so, see this slide. The Wasteland Tower is just a bit taller, and so if I get a, a good jump here, I should be able to just jump onto the tower, but even otherwise, it's fine. Uh, no, I'm too far away. Oh, never mind, I made it. Never mind. God gamer. <laughs> and this is the problem with not looking at the tower. You just stand there, shuffling the menus, waiting for it to load. Yeah, timing-wise, this ends up being faster than that BTB. Um, and that BTB is, it's obviously, it's a BTB, which is like a couple of frames of window, which is not conducive to um, any form of consistency. Where exactly does timing end again? Does it end when you press A on the tower? Um, so for the final tower, timing ends when the final text box shows up. Ah, oh, okay, okay. So after this cutscene for the last tower there's a text box shows up that that shows up that says hey you got all towers congratulations you're a winner that's yeah that's word for word what it says how oh, never put that in the game it's interesting <laughs> so now we're coming up on the final bless the final slide of the run going to the oh. Karuto tower It's actually funny. When you're standing on the tower, you don't take cold damage. But just jumping up on the tower is enough. There's like a, a section right above, which is what triggers the cold region. And so just jumping up there to set up the OS, you'll see like <laughs> the cold animation pops up a couple times. And this is our last tower. We end with some nice soothing music from Cass. I missed that guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tower cut him short. Unfortunate. Yeah, all in all, it was pretty good. I got to show off two BTPs. I tried Stasis Bounce three times, but it, it did work once, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad we actually got to see, like, some cool variety of movement this time. Like, uh... Got to see wind bombs, BLSS, BTBs, and stasis bounce. That's something you normally do not get to see. <laughs> there, there's obviously a, a bunch more movement tech. Most of them are completely obsolete. Like stasis launches have been obsolete since wind bombs were discovered. Begin the YBA showcase. Time to switch games to a link to the past. And that's time. GG. Here. It was a decent run, considering some of the difficulties we had uh, with um, having to reload a bunch of times and then reloading back to Akala to showcase the BTBs again. But yeah, I'm pretty happy. You won't see most of this movement tech in the upcoming race. Most of it is just going to be wind bombs and BLS. Um, but yeah, if you're learning this game, I definitely recommend learning this run because it helps so much with BLS. Um, yeah, really helps with the rest of the run too. All right, thank you very, both very much for all your work and all your dedication with this run. Uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of a shout out opportunity for anything you'd like. Um, yeah, uh, I speedrun this video game and also link to the past. If you think that's cool, check me out. Noman also speedruns this game. He, I hope he does, <laughs> and Tears of the Kingdom. But Noman also doesn't stream. He streams once every blue moon, so that's cool too, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, huge shout outs to the Breath of the Wild community in general. Um, uh, I definitely wouldn't have uh, continued running this game if it wasn't for like the friendly community there. 
So be sure to join the Breath of the Wild Discord if you want to learn more stuff there. A um, bunch of cool resources um, that you can help use to learn whatever you need to. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Anything else you want to add, Noman? Uh, no, that was pretty much everything. Well, good for me. All right. Well, thank you both again for all your hard work. Uh, this has been Event Horizon Rejects for Rejects and Friends, our small showcase event that we have just leading up to some of our bigger events. Rapid Fire is coming up on June 23rd through 25th. You can see the schedule by typing exclamation point RAF RF Rejects and Friends Rapid Fire in chat. We are indeed looking for a couple more art prizes. So if that is of any interest to you, please make sure to take out, check out the form that is now in chat. But yes, that is going to be it for us today. Keep an eye out for hopefully next week where we have yet another event leading up. And we will see you then. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>